Universe, and we're going viral. TJ McConnell, he had a triple-double coming off the bench for the 76ers last night. His teammates decided to have a little fun with him during the post-game interview. Take a listen. About the New York Knicks. <laughs> the most a unexpected triple double of the season I would uh, say. Uh, that's a very kind way to put it. I'm gonna say it in a less kind way. I'm happy for TJ McConnell. But he's the worst player to ever get <gasps> triple double in NBA history. Man, why are you hating on the guy? Oh, man, the guy is all just, hustle, all effort. Like here I mean no, seriously, man, this dude is all heart. This dude is a gym rat. The coach will always find a spot for a guy like TJ, man. Yeah. No serious dude can shoot, okay. plays great defense. Okay. What do you don't like it? What do you like? I like him fine. Listen, he now, I don't know who he replaces on that list. Oh. Dusty, I need to know who used to be now you're trying the to worst guy the to ever. Go. I'm not discrediting the triple. The fact that TJ got one might in and of itself discredit the triple double a little bit. It's unexpected. I mean, right? yeah, no, unexpected. Like I said, that was a kind way to put it. Nice I know I, I know you don't like when I say bad things about guys on their special I day. I keep trying to tell you, man, that. Day. People are recording this. Yeah, <laughs> so now some stories to start your oh, morning. Oh, and it's another Philly guy. Damn it. The Packers have the toughest schedule yeah, in 2018, go. but that's based on their opponents' combined records. And Green Bay with 79 last year, with Aaron Rodgers missing nine of those games. So, Chris Carter, do the Packers have it in them to have a bounce-back season this year? No, well, for one, you have to realize how the schedule's like that. They have two teams in, in Minnesota with 13 wins in Detroit. You know, those teams, they, it really inflates the schedule a little bit. When Aaron Rodgers misses nine games, though, I don't care who they play. If he plays 16 of them, I don't care who they play. They can play the toughest schedule ever. Green Bay's going to win double digits in games. So I believe the Packers will always be a favorite as long as number 12 is healthy. I agree with Chris on that. I think they will have a bounce back year in order for them to be a Super Bowl. They'll always be a Super Bowl contender with Rodgers. But for them to be a Super Bowl favorite, I need to see what they do this all they got to participate in free agency. Absolutely. Get in the game. See if you can add some playmakers on defense. And I wouldn't mind someone pushing Jordy Nelson for that number one wide receiver. Spot. I'm telling you, Jordy Nelson is not dead. I know he's not dead, but I but I just I'd like to see him have some competition for that top spot. All right, fair enough, fellas. Now going back to the NBA. Markel Fultz. Now he's trying all different kinds of things to get back on the floor. It's being reported that he's even using virtual reality goggles, yes, to help work on his jumper. Nick, do you think we'll see him back on the court this season? Man, I hope so. It, uh, there was a really good article in a Philly newspaper yesterday, long form about what's going on with him. If people didn't watch him at Washington, this guy shot over 40% from three yes. last year. In summer league, he threw up a 25, five and five. And then all of a sudden, I've never seen anything like it. Cece, I think he got the yips. And I don't think he's gotten over it. He just can't, he forgot his shooting form. Well, I think in, he had damaged the muscles and the nerves in his shoulder. Yeah. And in trying to continue to play with it, he developed a lot of bad habits. So now it's like rehab. He has to retrain the, the shoulder, retrain the muscle memory. If they take their time with him like they did Joel Embiid, like they did Ben Simmons, he will be back to playing. But if they rush him, man, some of the video of watching him, man, it's, it, it's horrifying to think that this caliber of athlete 12 months ago, and it also speaks to the Celtics and their decision who they drafted and who they didn't they draft. They traded away this man. They, that's looking like a heck of a decision by Danny Ainge. I, the, it is right because the I mean it's unbelievable what the Celtics were able to do and get an extra draft pick and maybe get the best player in the draft. But Fultz was the consensus number one pick, and now he forgot how to shoot. Mm, tragic. Derrick Rose. He's cleared waivers after being released by the Jazz. The Cavs traded away Rose as part of the deal to acquire Rodney Hood and George Hill. So Nick. Does D. Rose have it in him to be with another team this season? I, I do not think Derrick Rose, tragically, I don't think anymore he is a effective NBA player. But Tom Thibodeau loves acquiring these former Bulls. They need a backup point guard in Minnesota, so I could see him going there. But I watched Derrick Rose very closely this year. He was one of the least efficient, least effective players in the league. His body's betrayed him, and once his body went, he never could shoot. 
now I don't know what Derrick Rose can do for you anymore. Uh, that's his biggest problem. Um, I'm going to change a correction there. You say he was traded away. It was more of a giveaway. <laughs> you know, you, 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 you trade when you want something. Fair giveaway is when you just say, decide, I'm going to leave the baby on your front doorstep. <laughs> what you decide to do with it, that's why he, he was waiting. But... He should have trained himself earlier that he might be able to play more of a guard-type game, that he didn't have to rely on his physical skills. You know eventually your jumping ability and build to play above the rim, it's not going to be there. He didn't develop as a shooter. He didn't develop an intermediate game. So now, once his athleticism is gone, he has no change-up pitch. So for me, I don't see no more greatness in, in Derrick Rose. I don't see him being a contributor player to a, even a winning organization like the Timberwolves. I don't believe he can help him. I believe it's a courtesy of Thibodeau. That's, that's making me so sad, fellas. Yeah, it's brutal. Yeah. All right, finally. I become the first NBA MVP ever to not make the Hall of Fame. Hey, Evan, get over it. Tragic. Sorry. Okay, finally, he got the Cavs. A lot of shoe money <laughs> the Cavs and Thunder score off tonight. The Cavs now the favorites in the East after completely revamping their roster right at the trade deadline. Okay, see, has been surged as of late, and they now have the third best odds in the West. Nick, any chance that tonight kind of gives us a preview of the NBA Finals? I mean, I know that tonight's going to involve one of the teams in the Finals, that team being the Cleveland Cavaliers. Yeah, I'm not I know going to say, which say one, it, Nick, but one of the teams one, will be in there one of the, Yeah, I wonder I mean, which one he's going to say. Well, no, the Cavs will be in the Finals. So the question is, can the Thunder come out of the West? I I would love it if the Thunder came out of the West. It would be amazing to see Russ and Paul George with my guy, Syracuse guy, Melo, accomplish that. But I think the maybe underrated injury of this NBA season is Andre Roberson. And when they didn't acquire Avery Bradley at the deadline, when they didn't do anything to fill that hole, that day being Oklahoma City, the loss of Andre Roberson, in, and you know they are going to have to beat the Warriors and the Rockets in consecutive rounds. And they could have had Roberson guard Harden. They could have asked Roberson to guard Durant or Steph even. I don't think that the Thunder have enough defense anymore when that was their calling card early in the year to win three consecutive rounds of the playoffs in the Western Conference. So I'd love to be wrong on this, but I do not think this can be a finals preview because since the Roberson injury and since they didn't acquire Avery Bradley to make up for it, I don't think they have enough defense to win the West. You didn't want to reach and put the Thunder in the finals. And I'm not going to say it's a reach, but I'm not going to put the Cavs in the final. This is the second game. All right, like, let's give this some time. I mean, I'm not an Allen Iverson fan from as if I don't need practice, but these guys need some practice together. This is a good competitive situation to be in, going against the Thunder, a little bit like playoffs, but these last 30 games, the chemistry for Cleveland is very, very important. Something bad would have had to happen for OKC to be able to get out of the West and get to the finals. So I would be shocked if this was a finals um, potential matchup. Yeah. With but, OKC and Cleveland. So you're, you, you, I'm just out of curiosity. If Cleveland stays healthy, you think it's on the board that they don't win the East? I just think it's it's premature. I think that right now in February, it doesn't make sense to talk about finals matchups when I don't know what the team's going to look like. I've, I've seen them one time together, 48 minutes. So for now, for me to put them in the final, yeah, they might be the favorite on paper, but what are they going to look like in the final? Even if they were to make it to the finals, what are they going to look like? I don't know because I've only seen them in, in 48 minutes. Maybe one game's a little soon for the conclusion. Yeah, I, I needed zero games, by the way, oh, to well, put the Cavs in the finals. But that's just me. Yeah, no that's problem. All you needed was six players right trade. That, that's all you needed. So moving <laughs> on to the Warriors, Steve Kerr. Well, he took last night off from coaching. Well, he was on the bench, but he let David West, Andre Iguodala, and Draymond Green run the huddle in a 129-83 to win against Phoenix. Forward Jared Dudley ripped the move, saying that it showed a lack of respect for an opponent. Here's Kerr after the game. It's a player's team. It's their team, and they have to take ownership of it. And, and um, as coaches, our job is to nudge them in the right direction, guide them. Um, but we don't control them. They're, they determine their own fate. And um, I don't feel like we focused well at all the last month, and it just seemed like the right thing to do. And I thought they communicated really well together, and they – Drew up some nice plays, and um, it was a good night for the guys. Okay, Chris, we see the coach explaining here, but was it disrespectful to, to Phoenix? Uh, no, it's not disrespectful. We saw in the Super Bowl, Nick Foles came over and suggested a play to the coach. The coaches and the players are tied in together as far as what they're going to run. One thing about Golden State, 
that people don't give them credit for is how the organization is run. The players have a tremendous amount of influence. They listen to music. A lot of NBA teams don't do that. They do things very, very different, how they travel. Now, Steve Kerr, this just not happen last night. He had been talking the last couple games about they weren't hearing his voice. They were in kind of a rut. So you have to go beyond last night's game to be able to look at the Warriors and what they were trying to do. He told them he thought the players weren't listening to him. So he said, I thought you guys should talk to each other. It's your team. He said, it's not the general manager's team. He said, it's, the, it's not the owner's team. He said, I'm not going to tell him that. But so it was a whole list of things that he was going through to try to get his team's attention. Uh, it, it's like I was in a little league game and one of the coaches came over and he had he was upset with me because he said I ran up the score. I told him I was upset with him. He said, why are you upset with me? I said, you need to teach the damn kids how to tackle. <laughs> you know, because you got a certain amount of responsibility. Jared Dudley, he's sitting there at the game. What, what the heck is he? You got blown out by 40 points. And it's the he, third he time. And he conceded that. And Jared Dudley at the end of the quote said, maybe it's on us because we maybe. Keep getting, we've lost 11 of 12, keep getting blown out. Like, I mean, they, they, and so Jared Dudley said it was disrespectful, but also you said You need to be need concerned to about your own team. And if he had read any of the Warriors' notes, all right, which you typically read before the team comes there, you would have known that Steve Kerr was looking to get another voice to talk to his team okay. because... I think they had lost three out of the last four L or listen, something like that, right? Here's correct. So here's the thing. I was it disrespectful? Yeah, but I got no problem with it. Steve Kerr's job How is, is he not disrespectful because he would never have done this to pop. He would never have done this if they were playing the Rockets. It, part of the math on choosing this game is we are playing the Suns. Like we probably don't need a coach. And by the way, they won what one twenty nine. Steve Kerr was the general manager of the Suns. I don't believe he has some type of beef with no, them. I don't think he is. It's not about a beef with the organization. It's about them being one of the three worst teams in the NBA. But to your and point of respect, though, Nick, not to cut you off, but. You're right, it was disrespectful, but should respect be earned? No. And has so, Phoenix earned said well, respect? No, so this is my point. I got no, it, Steve Kerr's job is not to respect the Suns. Steve Kerr's job is not to worry about the feelings of the Phoenix Suns. Steve Kerr's job is to win a championship with Golden State. And what he has seen and what the world has seen over the last few weeks is something that is a real thing in the NBA, the disease of more and the, 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 the lethargy that comes with three consecutive NBA finals was afflicting this team. They needed a new voice. This was the right move for them. And I think with Draymond in particular, Draymond, who, by the way, leads the NBA in text, has had, has had a more emotional year even by his own standards, having Draymond experience what Kerr goes through might make Draymond more receptive to some of the things Kerr tries to talk to him about. If I'm a Warriors fan, I love this. I got no problem with what he did. But, of course, part of the math on it was the sun stink. Like, we, we can try new things. We can, we can be a little more forward-thinking or risky when we're playing Phoenix. I don't know why Jared Dudley is worried about what the Warriors are doing. The Suns have been a disaster from the beginning of the season. Their best player... Sent the message, I don't want to be here. Mm -hmm. Right? Sure did. That was Bledsoe. Their coach, Earl Watson, he was fired early in the season. Yes. So they got other things they need to be worried about. I, if I was, is he playing? Jared Dudley? Yeah. No, not really. He's not, what is he doing? I mean, Jared Dudley is there to be a veteran leader. He is signed because he's a good locker room guy, and he's there, uh, by the way, I think to give quotes like this, mm -hmm. to speak up for don't his Don't nobody want to hear from him? Okay, well, maybe the guys <laughs> in the locker room do. I mean, Jared. Well, is it working? <laughs> well, look, well, look at the numbers. Again, I, right. I mean, just let me know when Jared Dudley, let me know when he became the leader of leaders in the NBA. Well, there's now a, he's some quote machine. Hold on. There's a reason that a guy such as Jared Dudley, who is no longer has the skill set of an NBA rotation player, makes $8 million a year. It's so he can be signed to young teams to add some leadership in the locker room. We know there are roles for that. Because I know they're not the paying league. him $8 million for that 2.9 points he get in the game. No, 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 no. That's my point. But they knew because that that's going disrespectful. in. Respectful. Right, yeah. they, they knew that going <laughs> in. But on the Warriors side of this, because the Warriors are more, nobody cares about the Suns. The Warriors are the more interesting part of this, to me at least. I understand what Kerr's doing. I think it's smart. I think it's one of the reasons Kerr, when we talked about yesterday, does he get enough credit or too much credit? Kerr, 
Kerr just said the other day, listen, I have all this talent on my team. A lot of guys could win with my team. He saw Luke Walton go 37-4 and four with his team. He removes his own ego from the equation and, and maybe gives the Kerr haters, if they exist out there, more ammo. Say, look, Draymond and Iggy can coach the team. He's just doing what he thinks is best for his team. But sometimes what's best for your team can be disrespectful of your opponent. You, yeah, if you can't play in this professional all right, this is not this is not intramurals. This is not some little league. This is not some participation. Dudes are paying millions of dollars to put the ball in the hole and be able to stop guys from putting it in the hole. That's disrespectful when they put the team out there like the Suns. Now that's disrespectful. <laughs> They're young. It's a young team. Like the, the oh, league's got to have a bad the, team. It's still the Look, NBA. I, you I, shouldn't be a part of the quotes. You can get you can get knocked off the court by 40, but I don't want to hear any quotes from you, okay? Because what you're doing is disrespectful. Okay. Three times this year you lost by 40. Yeah, th okay. They're, they're a terrible team. Okay, no well, let's let's, 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 let's end on that team. one. Okay, let's end on We're that. We're gonna one. leave it there. You yeah. get the respect you deserve. I, I don't know guess. how they made the show. Last time they made the show yeah. was he said something to another player, didn't he? Coming out, Jared Dudley. Yeah, well, he, was, he was beefing oh. with um, Cantor, right? Go ahead. He said, no, they they hot about it. Believe it or not, Isaiah Thomas. Well, he's still. Yapping. Still got more to say about the Cavs. Hear it from him next on First Things First. Yeah, Canner told him he needed to get on an exercise bike. He was looking like a coach. Yeah, that was Canner talk.